So welcome to Gold Scratch and uh, this video uh, is actually uh, I guess part three of something that I started last week and uh, the subject was really a couple of subjects. One was how to break in a camshaft, flat type of camshaft and, and purge and, and, uh, and prime the oil system with a pressure tank and I, I think I've covered that in a previous video. Uh, the second part is how to properly break in a flat tap of camshaft and there are lots of good videos on YouTube about that already and that's why I haven't done one so far but uh, this situation kind of prompted me to do that um, and the reason is this engine uh, had already uh, uh, suffered a failure on startup uh, flattening a couple of camshaft lobes and, uh, and some lifters and of course when that happens uh, a whole bunch of things happens all the shrapnel gets into the oil and damages everything else so this was the second start so i was particularly cautious because the third issue we're dealing with here is the valve lifter issue and and uh i'm not sure if i made it clear there's really two parts of that issue uh, one is getting them there's been a shortage in the industry just like there's a shortage of everything else and then because of that shortage uh, you have to worry about the quality because there's lifters getting on the market that uh, are suspect and if you do research on YouTube you will see lots of information about sort of widespread uh, camshafts and lifter failures uh, right at startup time. So because I was concerned about that I took special precautions on this startup. I've started up uh, well over a dozen inches on this test stand and never had a failure yet but uh, because of that we were particularly nervous and so I only ran the engine for less than five minutes shut it down and did all the diagnostic checks and when I did uh, shut it down I go through the timing order 184 etc and I only had to get the four and I found uh, I'm looking at it right there right now you see that push right out number uh, Actually, it was the intake yeah, where the dial indicator, where the intake on number four is, and and that uh, rocker arm had a lot of clearance. And my first fear was that the lifter was wiped and the camshaft lobe was wiped. However, when I cut the manifold off, which didn't take very long, what I found was uh, that surface looks fine, and the lifter had actually collapsed. And here's your culprit right here. I don't know if you can see that, but the plunger is down in the bore farther than it should be by about three sixteenths of an inch. And if you turn it upside down, you can feel the plunger going up and down uh, as you shake it. So uh, that's called a collapse lift lifter. That's not what I was suspecting, but that's a whole lot better than the lifter failing at the other end. If it fails at the other end, it immediately damages the camshaft puts junk in the engine and does more damage and that's why I shut it off early. So the checks that I made uh, just to make sure that didn't happen uh, I have uh, taken out some of the lifters already and checked them and as by the way as soon as I posted this video I have a good friend in North Carolina named Brian Hambly and he builds engine for NASCAR cup cars and so that's he's been doing that for 11 for more than 30 years and he watches my videos obviously because he called me within a few minutes and said you missed something and one of the things I missed was checking the uh, curvature of the lifters and most people know this but lifters actually have about a, a one thou crown on the bottom of them it's pretty hard to see from the naked eye but it does have one and <clears throat> one way to check that is to put two lifters together and if you put them up to the daylight you can see a gap at the outside edges which tells you the crown's still there. Uh, I didn't think to do that at the time because I was dealing with brand new lifters but what Brian's advised me is uh, in, in their business they check everything and they found brand new lifters that didn't have curvature and if they don't they're going to fail immediately and so I will be doing that. So. So the good news is the rest of the engine isn't damaged. I cut the oil filter apart. There it is on the bench, spread out. I looked at it closely with a bright light and uh, there's no shrapnel or garbage in the, in the, in the, filter, in the uh, filter. And I also 
uh, drained all the oil through a paint filter and transferred it again uh, to make sure and there doesn't appear to be anything in the oil either. So it doesn't look like uh, a lot of damage was or any damage was done except the valve lifter itself. But the point to make is if I had run this engine for 20 or 25 minutes, which is normal, it would have. That lifter, the rocker arm was so loose it would have hammered away at the camshaft lobe and the lifter and you would have had a failure there as well. Uh, probably bent push rods and a whole bunch of other sort of collateral damage. So where are we now? Um, sort of good news and bad news scenario. Uh, what I will do before it goes back together, that's if I'm putting it together, is take every lifter out, uh, check the lobe of every uh, every lobe on the camshaft. I already checked four. It's my Dell indicator set up there. And the four that I've checked, including the one that was uh, had the collapse lifter, is fine. Uh, it's right on spec so far. And uh, it's imperative that the rest of them get checked as well. Uh, also, I will do the test that Brian advised, put two lifters together and make sure we do have some curvature. I'm sure in NASCAR cup uh, shops they have a lot more scientific way of doing that, but uh, if I put two together and I don't see daylight, I know I got a problem, so we're going to stop right there. Uh, the next step is really up to the original engine builder and the customer, uh, just what they want to do. One option is to put one good lifter back in and put it back together. Uh, another is to change all of them, and that's really, uh, really their call, really, and they'll do whatever they say. We'll go through the exact same process, starting it up again, and uh, as long as we don't have another collapse lifter, I'll shut it down again at five minutes. I'll do all the same tests I just mentioned, go through the whole valve sequence. Uh, what I also did, uh, which is uh, hard to see, I'm going to move around here, I guess is I painted a line on every push rod and when I turned the engine over just to check the uh, just to check I, I did that after it was started up by the way uh, because you can't tell if you do it before I painted a line on every push rod and just turning the engine over to check the valve lift as you can see all the lines were these lines were lined up at the front of the engine and now they're not because as you turn the engine over the push rods rotate and that's very important uh, that they do rotate and so far it appears that all these push rods are rotating so that's a pretty good sign but once again uh, if i'm putting it back together all the lifters are coming out we'll check the lifters uh, we will check the uh, lift on every camshaft lobe make sure that's good and give her another run so I uh, hope you found this interesting and helpful. I know that, uh, once again, if you do research on, on this subject, you'll find this is not the only, we're not the only one having this issue. Uh, it's a widespread issue, and as I say, uh, one solution you could say, well, just put a roller cam in it. Well, a uh, lifter and a roller cam, it's not likely to fail on the bottom like that, but it's just as likely to fail on the top. It can collapse as well. So that doesn't even necessarily uh, solve the problem, uh, but uh, at least because of the precautions we did take, uh, we didn't destroy the rest of the engine and we lived to play another day. Hope you find that helpful. If you do, uh, please give me a like. Uh, if everybody has any questions, uh, I try to answer them all and, uh, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching Gold Scratch.